Hey there, Dangus Stu here. Uh, today we're going to do a bit of splicing. Um, splicing's a uh, technique for putting a loop in a rope like this. Um, you can also uh, join two ropes together or um, put a sort of top knot to end a rope. Um, so it can be a few different reasons you might want to splice a rope. But traditionally a loop like on the handle of our bucket is um, uh, sort of the most common type of splice you do. So I'm going to take you through that. Um, splicing's good for sort of permanent lines. It's also good just for permanent loops. So once you've spliced uh, like a rope onto here, once again it can't sort of be borrowed. It just ends up being the, the rope permanently for this bucket, fire bucket. Um, so it doesn't sort of disappear. That's kind of one advantage. Um, the other one is if you just want to have a loop on a rope for putting around a cleat or whatever, um, it's a, a much more um, sort of slimline way of attaching it, and the the loop tends to form a nicer shape than if you just tighten it off in the end. So it's got a couple of purposes, a couple of reasons why you do this over tying knots. So let's get going and I'll uh, take you through how to do it. So the type of rope we're going to be splicing today um, is a very common sort of um, three strand lay. So it's just three strands twisted as a rope. This is a, a sort of a nylon or poly rope. Um, and to sort of make it a little bit easier to see, um, I've just tried to dye these three strands different colours, so as we go you'll, uh, you'll sort of see how it weaves into the other one a bit more. Um, now the amount of rope that you, um, that you separate the strands on um, dictates how many times you'll be able to tuck the rope under. And you want to get it tucked at least five times for a synthetic rope like this. Um, with a natural fibre you need less tucks because it's got a bit more grip on the surface of it, but we want enough for at least five. Um, that obviously is a ratio of the sort of thickness of the rope to this. Um, to be honest with you, I tend to sort of eyeball it. So for me, a rope like this is about 10 mil rope, I think. Um, I'll usually get about that. It might actually be a little bit too much, to be honest with you, because I sort of separated it to die. But we'll see how we go. Um, nothing wrong with having more uh, tucks. Just do it until you run out. It keeps them neat. Um, but you need a minimum of five. So once you've got to the point um, where you're saying, right, this is as much as I want to do, I could actually reconnect uh, retwist these these strands but um, often I find people um, will just uh, put a bit of tape around the point so it doesn't continue to um, to separate not entirely necessary but just something for you to experiment with just a little bit of electric tape or something just means that by the time you've got to separate you go right that's how much I want and it can't unravel any further so the next decision you have to make is how big you want the eye to be um, and obviously whether you're attaching it permanently to something. If I was attaching it permanently, like I was with this bucket, I'd have to do the entire splice with it already wrapped around, because once it's done, there's no getting it on. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do a loop that I can then put over a cleat. So I need to have a sense of whether I want the eye to be, you know, this big, this big, etc. Um, and when it comes to cleats, it's good to have an eye that's large enough to sort of go through the cleat and ride over it. So make sure you don't make that eye too small, um, depending on what your, the purpose of the, the line you're making up. So once you've decided, I'm going to make this about day big. Um, the next thing you have to do is just prepare to do all those first tucks. And that's kind of, in some ways, it's the hardest part. Because um, you just sort of got to get yourself oriented. Once you get going, you'll find it's quite a simple repetitive um, process to, to splice. Um, so the way I begin is when the three layers come out, I always find they sort of have a bit of a triangle shape to them. It's, in this case, the red one's on the top, and the green's going to be on your left, I think, um, and the blue on your right. And so to me, that there's sort of a triangle shape, and then where I've got that triangle, that's the way I, I lay it down, because I find that's the one that sort of most naturally fits over the rope, if you imagine like that. So that's my sort of starting position. It doesn't really matter where, i have just... The other thing is make sure you don't have a twist in your eye, because if you have a twist, you can never get it out again once it's spliced. So just have a look at how your, your rope is sitting together. There's nothing worse than splicing an eye and it sort of ends up with a twist in it like this. So just make sure that it's sitting quite nicely before you begin. So, the way to begin is to simply tuck one of your lines first. And the way you tuck them is, if you can see here where the white part of the rope that's not dyed, that's the part we're splicing these lines into. And um, these lines, and you'll see how the lay comes across in this diagonal. And when I tuck this uh, strand, I'm tucking it almost sort of 90 degrees. So it's actually going under one and over. So if I just twist this slightly, it'll sort of separate a bit. Then all I need to do is just get started. Any one 
tuck it straight under and then pull it through until this triangle shape I was talking about is now sitting um, tight up against the tape. So you've pulled it in so your loop's tight. Quick double check the eyes not, not uh, twisted at all. Okay, now we've got this one. I now need to be a bit more precise about my second tucks because this is where I need to go to a particular structure. But that first one is really taking any of these. In this case, I've taken the middle one. Well, I think of the, the top of the triangle, the way I think of it. Um, and put it under any point in this rope that's dictated by the size of the eye I want. So now I've got this tucked under. If I roll this rope over, I'll see that this red one's coming between these two strands. And then if I keep running around the rope, the next strand I get to is this one here. So I'm thinking of this as the neighbor. Now this blue one, I'm now going to put in, in between these two strands where the red came out, and then out its neighbor. So it's going to go in, So the red one's coming out between these two, the blue one's going in. Now if I roll this back the other way, I'll see here where the uh, red one comes, um, comes in and the blue one comes out. I'm going to put the green in and slot it under. Now what we've got here is that we have three, this is a three strand rope, and as I follow the rope around, I'll see that every gap in one of those three strands, there's three strands, three gaps, every gap has one colour going in and one colour coming out. So in this case, this gap has a blue going in and a red coming out. This gap has the blue coming out, the green going in. This one has the green coming out and the red going in. And that's the sort of starting position. Now you can pull these a bit tighter up against that tape. It's a way of just making sure it's all snugged. And once you get to there, you're actually pretty much home and hosed. It's then just repeating that process round and round. Now all I have to think of next is, like all weaving, you're ducking under and over, under and over. So if I take this green strand here, I'll see that it's, and it's always heading in the opposite direction. So if you imagine these, uh, the white strands of this rope going that way, I'm sort of heading at 90 degrees to these. So this green one, I'm gonna go under there, uh, sorry, over that one, which you can see it's doing, then I'm gonna go under that one, then I'll go over this one, under that one, as you work your way along the rope. But you don't wanna just go and do your, your green, you're gonna do one tuck of each color. So in this case, the greens come out here, so I'm just gonna twist it a bit, then I'm gonna go over that one and under that one. So it's just one tuck, under this, over this, under this. Then just spin the rope round some way, and I'll see the next thing this blue one wants to do is go over this one, which means it has to go under that one. Okay, and then I want to do the red one to keep everything sort of balanced and caught up. And then here, I'm going to go over this one because it went under this, so it's under that one, over that one, under that one. And that's my next round of tucking. You can kind of tighten it up a little bit, neaten it up a little bit as it goes. But when I've finished, I'll always end up in the exact same situation where this gap has one color going in, one color going out. This gap between these two white has one color going in, one color going out. And this gap has one color in, one color coming out. So every, every gap always has one in, one out. And then all I have to do is just keep repeat. So in this case, um, this red one went under here, so it's going to go over that one, under the next one. Then this blue came under there, so it's going to go over there, tuck in there. Then this one's over that one, under that one. And then, once you get going, just keep spinning round. Over and under and under. Over and under. Next one. Over. Back under. Over and under. Over and under.
So, and you'll see, because they're heading across, I mean, obviously they fall over the over, so you're actually just doing a series of unders, really. So as soon as it comes out this hole, you just simply know that it has to go over, and then back in the next one. Coming out from here, go over, under the one after. Here, coming out, and over. And then eventually, you'll get to the point where get to the end of your strands and that's your whole splice. So I'll just give you a close-up of the uh, finished splice and see if that uh, helps it all make sense. This is the back side of it. And uh, once you're finished, um, just take this bit of tape off. This was just here to stop it sort of uh, unraveling as we were going. Um, and then you're good to go. Now that's got, uh, what is it, um, sort of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So sort of, that's quite a, a long splice. It probably could have stopped about here. I kind of had a feeling I had way too much. Um, separate to start with, but that's something you'll get a you'll get a sense of. I'm sure there's some way of measuring the thickness of the rope against the length and the number of tucks and there'll be a formula for it. But to be honest with you, it's pretty easy to eyeball. And as long as you've got enough, there's nothing wrong with a splice that's too long. It's certainly going to hold strong. Um, it's just whether the actual splice gets in your way or not. If this has to run through a pulley or something, that may be an issue. Um, so. Uh, Thanks for watching. Um, I hope this helps. I wish the die had come out a little bit dark. It might have made it a bit easier to see. Um, I'll certainly do other videos on back splices and things down the track, but for now I think I'll just keep it at this standard sort of uh, splice for putting an eye in a three-strand uh, three strand rope. Uh, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, rate and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.